This character was generated by AI in a matter of minutes. But can you actually use it in your game? At least that's the aim of Rodan, which is a new 3D asset generation tool using AI. Rodan asked me to give an honest review of their image to mesh process. I'm more than a little bit skeptical about AI in the game development space, and so we're not gonna pull any punches. Our ultimate goal is going to be able to create a player character that we can use in a game, but first we're gonna test Rodan in three different mesh categories, basic, complex, and organic. So for our text input, let's type in wooden crate. That's not quite what I wanted. Closed wooden crate. Maybe not a crate, maybe a box. That's just an empty box. Yeah, I think we need to be just a little bit more descriptive. Wooden crate box with six sides. Cube has six sides. And cross pieces that create an X on the side. Okay, that's better. It's not as simple as I'd like. Let's roll with it. And then we're gonna click the generate button. Taking a little bit. I think I could have made a box already. All right, here we go. So you get a pop-up. Looks like we get a nice mesh preview with our PBR normals. It definitely looks like we got some issues here basing it on this image. And I, I can't see the image enough to know why that's happening. Like if you were making this, you would want it to be pretty simple. Like this is just a box. This is not simple. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too happy with this setup. Dark, wooden, crate, nailed, shut, closed, sharp edges. What else could we do? I think this is always the issue with these AI prompty things. It's like, you have to learn how to do these prompts. And at, at that point, just learn how to do the thing. And now I'm getting another banana crate. Can I say not a banana crate? Not a banana crate. It's still a crate. Let's add the six size again. That seemed to do a good job. Issue number one, I can't actually get the thing that I want it to do. Okay, so we've got our crates. Let's go with this. We can't actually get the um, closed box. I'm sure you could work at it and get a better prompt, but I don't want to sit here and work on prompts. We use a credit and you can pick how many polys you want. It's a box. 3,000 polys for our boxes. That's, that's a lot. We'll generate this and let's see what comes up. Oh, that, it's not great. We, we did get a, an open box. Categorize this as like sharp, it, it, it's a box. Like it should just be a box. And we've got so much detail here that, that we don't need. We got some, some weird stuff going on at the corners here. All right, now we're gonna work on our material. I think how this works is it's gonna take this image as the reference for the material for our, our box here. So we'll generate, this is also taking a credit and I'll be interested to see how it handles this, this inside the box. You know, it's, it's not, it's not terrible. I mean, it looks AI generated. We'll, we'll open this up in Blender and we'll take another look at it. It's a bit messy. And then we've got this, maybe that's like a handle. We've got some messiness here. Far away, it doesn't look bad, but you're getting closer. Yeah, this was made by AI. We can redo it. Let's just drop the reference strength to uh, very low. And I'm not sure what they mean by temperature, but let's make it, let's let's pump it up. I'm finding that I, I'm I'm not liking the waiting periods. Honestly, it's it's a little bit better in some ways. So it's some kind of like projection thing. This is a complete mess down here. And now we can pack it as a uh, base model. We can do some LODs and you can do a high poly. If you were gonna do some details with the high poly to, to do your own normal map, at that point, you're, you're still doing the work. Now, if I wanted to use this as a game ready asset in a game, I would want to, to have the lowest number of polys. It's a box. Let's do the PBR, we'll do 4K and we'll download. All right, so we've imported our crates. There's some there's some weird stuff going on. First off, it's incredibly shiny. So the roughness texture is not doing what you would expect. In fact, I'm gonna turn that off because that's really distracting. Definitely see where there's some issues with the, uh, the albedo in general, some odd stretching, and uh, I don't know what's going on down there. There are parts of it that are are not bad. These uh, these surfaces aren't aren't terrible. And honestly, from far away, it could pass. The closer you get, it, it kind of falls apart. Let's look at the wireframe. It's pretty busy. 
over 3,000 vertices for a crate. If you're spending 3,000 vertices on a crate, you're gonna have some problems. As we go higher in our level of detail here, it's less the construction of this is all over the place. You probably would be better off coming in here and, and using the decimate modifier. 132, it's still got some weird stuff going on. This is a box. This is like the most basic. You could make this in Blender in five minutes. One thing they do talk about on the website is that they are focused on hard edges. I'm not getting crisp edges here. That's worrisome. So let's try to do a more complex asset. Uh, let's try laser pistol cartoon style like, let's even do like ratchet and clank. Let's see what that, that creates. Okay, with exaggerated styling. Let's see, that just looks like a like a gun. So the image generation is, is give and take, and you don't seem to have a whole lot of control. So let's cut out the middleman. We're gonna get a uh, high quality image. Let's do ratchet and clank, actually. Let's do um, ratchet's wrench. I'm gonna take that and add it, and let's, Let's generate with our own image. It's not far off. Let's try adding some more images. Maybe that'll help. All right, I've compiled more images. I've even got a, a real life replica here. Like this is higher detail. Okay, now this is this is more impressive. I'm, I'm liking the detail that I'm seeing. It's not half bad, to be honest. Let's do it with the 10,000. Now the true question will be, how are the edges? We have 10,000 vertices. The edges should be, should be pretty tight. I'll step aside here for one second. This is very impressive. It's it's impressive that you can just take an image, get a pretty close approximation to that image as a, as a 3D model. That's impressive. But it's sort of the thing that I, I feel with most AI. It's impressive, but it's it's missing something. Generate our material. All right, that's not, it's not too bad. It's very close to this. So you definitely have some odd spots, but you know, from far away, I think that would get the job done. All right now, I've got the wrench in Blender, so let's take a closer look. The material is quite a bit better than the, the crate. You can see there are clearly some issues here. And I say this in relative terms, because if you were modeling this, like that would be clearly, you wouldn't want that, you would fix that. But the problem, I'm not seeing any hard edges. It's got very rounded edges. You're gonna need hard edges on your models. So this is the same wrench, but it's made by Richard Still here on Sketchfab. You can tell the difference. There are clear edges, the wear, is extremely tight. I mean, this is a, a much higher quality model that someone has made. Now you put these two side by side, there's gonna be a pretty big difference. Okay, final test. Let's create something that's more organic. Let's create um, a tree. How many times have you wanted to make a tree? Stylized tree. It's green with yellow flowers. Uh, it looks kind of low poly. I say this is way, way too busy. This is not gonna be usable. It's just not how you make trees. We'll see what it does with the material, but I I don't feel like this is really super usable. We seem to have gotten stuck. Let's refresh. All right, I've tried this three times. It keeps getting stuck at 90% when generating the mesh. We're, we're just gonna have to move on. Let's try to create a character and we'll see what happens. We're gonna try to create the Godet mascot that was created for Gato 3. These are some solid reference images, so it should give us the best chance for something pretty good. All right, I've got them all loaded. I'm gonna use the multi-view option. Let's see what we get. It's definitely a character. Let's adjust some of these things. Oh, not quite. Directions here. All right, that's the front. Left, back. All right, we've got a T pose. You know what? Let's let's go with it. It's not terrible. Hyper it up. Thirty thousand polygons, and there's our model. It's not as detailed as I was hoping for. Check out the geometry on it, the wireframe. Check out the material. Ah, uh, I mean, <laughs> it's pretty rough. I can't I can't zoom in on the face, but yeah. Again, I think it would be acceptable as like a 3D print, but we'll, uh, we'll put some animations on it. Let's try that. Upload this to Mixamo. I do appreciate the fact that it was in a T-pose. That does make this easier. Get our chin. Oh, all right, the face is a little rough. Rig it up. I still get that feeling. It's like, if you look at it real quick, it's, it's okay, it looks good. But then you really look at it and it's just not right. And there you go. We've got our AI generated mesh of Godet animated in Mixamo. It's something. 
just something about that face. The outline looks good. It's just, oh. <laughs> so it does work. The quality is not quite there, but it is entertaining nonetheless. All right, so I've used Rodan for about four hours now. Is it impressive? Yes, but it has some issues. Well, let's go back to the featured list that's on the front page. These look like really solid models until you look closer. Take this robot, for example. From here, it looks great. You have some nice presentation for it. From far away, it looks pretty good until you zoom in. And then you notice it kind of falls apart. Those details aren't really there and it lacks a lot of cohesion for what this actually would look like given someone modeled it. They almost look like little figurines that you would print or would be made out of metal and painted. And it really goes across almost every one of these that you look up. And these objects have this rounded edge effect that may not be desired for your game. The material and typology kind of fall apart when you get closer to them. So what's the verdict? Is it game ready? I don't think so, not yet. You can definitely make some pretty cool things with Rodan, but if you're going to try to use these in a game, you're gonna have a lot of cleanup work to do. The edges aren't clearly defined, there are too many vertices, and the materials are more of an approximation than anything else. What that means is you're probably gonna to have to reduce the number of vertices and clean up quite a bit of the topology. The material might work from far away, but close up, you're gonna have issues. My question at that point is if you're gonna be doing all that work anyway, why don't you just model it from the start? All that said, I am interested to see how Rodan develops and improves going forward. If you wanna try Rodan for yourself, I do have a link in the description for 50% bonus credits on your first payments. Hopefully this video gave you some insight in what can be done and what issues might still need to be addressed. As always, thanks for watching and keep creating.